Pumping up your tyres at the side of the road can seem like quite a chore, but fortunately, a CO2 cartridge inflator is a super quick alternative. They're also really small, so they're easy to carry around. But they can seem quite daunting. After all, if you get it wrong, your precious CO2 blasts away in just a couple of seconds. But there is no reason to get it wrong. They're straightforward to use. Just follow these simple steps. Now, first of all, how do they actually work? Well, all inflators are slightly different, but they work on the same basic principle, and that is that CO2 is compressed inside this metal cylinder. Now, some have a start-stop button, like this Topeak Air Booster, so this cartridge then threads or pushes back inside the head, and as it does so, it releases CO2, inflating your tyre in seconds. So, it's a really simple system, and there's no reason to get it wrong. Now, of course, you probably already know this, but it's good practice when changing an inner tube to partially inflate the new tube before putting it inside your tyre. That means that it holds its shape a little bit so that it's less likely to get pinched when you're putting it in. However, you can't actually do that with a CO2 cartridge, but you can with your mouth. That sounds a little bit gross, but it's not. Just unscrew the valve, and then a couple of breaths is all it'll take. Excellent. There we go. Then when the tyre's on, you need to check to make sure that it's seated correctly and there's no bits of inner tube poking out because it's likely that if there are, when you inflate it, the tube will burst before you've even had any warning. Now, I'm sure you always do this, but with an inflator, you've got to be really, really thorough. When you're sure it's all good, now it's time to actually use the inflator. So, first of all, you put the head on the valve, press it on firmly, and then you need to screw the cartridge in. As you screw it in, you'll find it meets the point of resistance, and this is where the pin in the head is pushing against the seal on the cartridge. So you go past this, and you're gonna set your inflator off. So, make sure the head is firmly attached, give it a twist, watch it go. You've got to watch your fingers here as it gets super cold. That's actually now ice. How cool is that? 121 PSI, more than enough for anyone. In fact, I'm going to let a little bit out. Getting a bit science nerd now, there is one last thing to consider, and that is that CO2 will leak out of your tyre faster than normal air, meaning that your tube will go flat overnight. You want to know why? Go on then, I need my glasses for this bit. So. CO2 molecules are more permeable and soluble through butyl rubber than other molecules found in air. So, ordinarily, when you inflate your tyre with normal air, CO2 will permeate through the rubber, leaving other elements such as nitrogen and oxygen still in your tyre, keeping it inflated. However, when there's only CO2 in there, although the CO2 leaks out at the same rate, there's nothing left in there to keep your tyre inflated, meaning that it will go flat. So, on that very interesting note, We'll leave it there. If you need a bit of help actually changing your tyre in the first place, then why not watch this video up here of Dan changing an inner tube at a roadside. Or to avoid punctures in the first place, why not click and watch a great video just down there. Finally, to guard against punctures altogether, why not just subscribe to GCN? It's almost guaranteed to eliminate the risk of punctures. Almost, but not quite.